This is The Professionals, a podcast by Music Business Technology and Broadcast Media Technology students on Outcast OCCR Owens Community College Radio. In this series, students will interview industry professionals in their respective fields to help gather an idea of what it's like to work in their industry. Hi, my name is Greg McCluskey, majoring in music education recording this podcast for my Professions of Music class. I'm here with one of my instructors here at Owens Community College. Could you please state your name and what your occupation is here? My name is Eric Wallach, and I'm a professor of music here at Owens Community College. How did you obtain your interest in uh, teaching music here at Owens? Well, I have been a musician since about fourth grade, and I've tried to make as many different inroads into being a professional musician as possible. And that includes having worked in a music store, to teaching guitar lessons, fixing and repairing instruments. And I got a um, master's degree, and in 1990, I started teaching here at Owens Community College before there was a fine performing arts center. So I taught English and I taught humanities. Hmm. What would you say is your area of expertise with this career? Um, I've been teaching for, this is my 33rd year teaching, so I've gotten a little bit better at teaching, I hope. Um, and in terms of music itself, my main interest is in plucked string instruments like guitar and mandolin and bass. And musically speaking, I have a really profound interest in harmony. Leading to where you are today, what kind of schooling and experience did you have to go through in order to be able to obtain your career? Well, I started uh, music lessons in fourth grade on trumpet, and by the time I got to seventh grade, I had switched to guitar and bass, and when I went to college, I taught classes in music, and also uh, I took classes in music and English. Um, I would say that music lessons was one thing, but also getting a master's degree and uh, learning how to teach was the next thing as well. I believe that a minimum requirement for a person teaching at the community college level would be at least a master's degree. Have you always taught uh, music at, at the college level, or did you teach it at like music stores or any other place other than at uh, community college? I did give private lessons out of my home for a while, and I gave private lessons through several music stores uh, before I was a teacher here at Owens. What was it like having a job at a music store? Chaotic, because um, some days if you don't have a student show up for his or her lesson, then you're working at the cash register or trying to sell musical instruments, so you kind of wear many hats. It also sometimes would include taking the cash bag to the, to the bank at night. You know, that's a little hairy. Uh, so a little of everything. Sometimes it's uh, working in a music store means you're wearing many, many hats. Do you have any continuing education or activities related to your career that you still partake in? Yep. Uh, I take classes online still regularly, and sometimes I'll take lessons with guitar players online, even still at this stage. Um, I've been able to take lessons through teachers who work at Berkeley College of Music, and that's been really great to take lessons from some people whose records I actually own. What genres of music do you uh, continue to learn to this day? Jazz, improvisation, um, and also classical music, um, and contemporary rock, folk, and pretty much everything. Um, I've also had a lot of experience doing songwriting. I heard you did this project where you made a song every day for a year, is that correct? It is true. I was teaching a songwriting class, and I mentioned to my students, you know, you have to work at the craft every day, and I realized, well, wait, I don't do that every day. So I made it a point to start writing and recording and uploading to a podcast, a song every day for an entire year. And I actually did complete that project. And uh, I learned quite a bit about staying creative. Uh, I think I learned more about things other than songwriting than I did about songwriting, and it was an incredibly valuable and rewarding experience. Were there any challenges with doing that project? Well, the first week was easy, and then I ran out of all my ideas. So uh, the challenge was learning how to tap into creativity when it doesn't seem like there's any there, but there's a requirement to get something out. And in many cases, the songs I look back on that are my favorite from that year project are the ones that happened on days where I really had no idea what to do that day. And in digging deep, I came up with something that I, at the end, really liked a lot. Now, I haven't heard any of these songs. Uh, where am I able to find them? If you go to iTunes and type in my name, uh, you will find them all there. Are you also on Spotify? I am not. Hmm. Um, at least as far as I know. What kind of genres did you do while you were uh, doing those songs? A lot of it, I think, drew from elements of American folkish songwriting, but there's some rock songs on there. There's some 
there's some electronic music on there. All of those songs had to have lyrics and they had to have at least one instrument on them. Mm-hmm. Uh, looking back, you can tell by the songs which ones happened on weekends because those were the ones that had the most extravagant arrangements. Mm-hmm. During the weekdays, we'd just like get the song out and go to work. <laughs> what are some hurdles that you have had to overcome in order to obtain your career? Hmm. Uh, I moved from New York to Ohio and that was a big deal for me. I had only ever been in New York State um, in terms of living uh, in any place. Um, that was a big deal, getting used to uh, living so far away from my family. That was a big deal for me. Um, but in terms of professionally, um, I, I kind of look at challenges that come along as opportunities. And uh, any time that I've had a challenge in to teaching or to keeping a career going and things like that, I'll take that as a challenge and find a way to make that work. What are some of the challenges that you have had to overcome? Um, Being better at addressing a variety of learning styles. And also, when I started teaching here, uh, for the first time in my life, there were people in my class that I was teaching who are my students who are much older than me. That was an interesting experience that I hadn't anticipated. Uh, But of course, a community college population is made up of all kinds of people of different backgrounds and different ages. So that was something that initially I had to, that was a challenge for me initially. But as looking back on it to this day, I think that's one of the greatest assets of this college is that you're in a classroom with all kinds of different people from different backgrounds, different experiences, and even different age groups. What would you say is your favorite part of teaching? Uh, Playing music with students. That's pretty much the dream job right there. Um, Of course, I love talking about music. Ask anybody I know that I'll pretty much bring music up or talk about some aspect of music at any time of the day. So being able to do that in the classroom is great. And of course, the opportunity also in ensembles and in lessons to play music with students, that's icing on the cake. What are some benefits and some drawbacks that come with your career? Benefits, uh, long vacations if I want them. Um, I am the son of two parents. uh, So for me, the year always started in September, not January. uh, And we always had summers off because my parents were teachers. uh, And I have kind of, that's now part of my life rhythm is that the year begins in September and summers are off and there's a break at Christmas time. So those are benefits, time off. Um, The downside is sometimes too much time off, you kind of lose some of your teaching craft. Just like if you don't practice music for a long period of time, you'll lose some of your musical skills, your technique. And the same is true with teaching. Um, I get really nervous the first day back after a long break because I've kind of lost that confidence or uh, I'm out of routine of being in front of the students. So sometimes in going back to school in August, I'm a little nervous. How do you get back into that rhythm of teaching? Usually it happens automatically. I will step into the classroom even if I'm nervous and it just kind of all comes back. It's there. Uh, as someone who's in the music education program, are there any skills needed in order to get into teaching music? Start teaching um, even as a student. If you're a guitar player, start teaching younger guitar players how to play guitar. Get used to interacting with people on a teacher-student basis, whereby you have to think about what does this student need to learn and how can I present that material to this student? What are some resources that I may have that I can draw upon to help this student learn how to um, play guitar better, for example? Um, Take classes in a variety of related subjects. Um, If you can find, a, for example, a teacher ed kind of a class to take uh, in your studies somewhere to learn a little bit more about teaching. That would be a great class to take if you, if you have a schedule that would allow that. How does someone who is majoring in music education, such as myself, uh, go about finding people to teach music to? Putting signs up at music stores, um, social media advertising. I've had students of mine who put out their sign, so to speak, on social media saying, I'm available for lessons if anybody's interested or if you know of anybody interested. I'm I'm looking at people of this level of skill and I'm looking at between these kinds of age groups. I know I've asked this before of you, but do you recommend like taking lessons at a music store and just gaining a bunch of these, um, just the ability to play music 
through all these lessons and finding a way to like to become part of that institution as like to teach there as well i think that that's a really good way to do it um in fact i recommend that my students who are taking lessons with me take lessons from other teachers as well because there's always a variety of ways to share and um, acquire the same information working at a music store taking lessons at a music store means you also have access to a lot of different kinds of instruments uh, to try other for example if you're a guitar there's other guitars to try that you may not have played before and then you start to become familiar to the owners and the other employees at the store and you have a better chance of making an appeal saying oh, I've been taking lessons here for a long time I'm pretty confident in my ability I was wondering if you need any more teachers you're already kind of known to the stores because you've been taking lessons there so I think that's a really good place to start uh, do you have any specific tips for someone looking to teach music never stop being a student um, as a teacher I think I've learned more about music and my instrument teaching music and my instrument than I did when I was a student purely um, so keep that student mind alive do you feel that teaching music you continue to learn more as well absolutely absolutely um, I see concepts that I knew existed before but I never quite wrapped my head around them when I was younger uh, having taught those things so many times um, definitely there's a clarity the more I teach about my understanding of complex harmony or music theory or even the workings of the guitar and inevitably there'll be students who will show me things that I hadn't thought of before so it's a really great two-way street uh, have I already asked uh, what was your favorite thing to teach about music yeah I was playing with other students and being able to be immersed in talking about and learning about music you know, every day and getting paid for it what would you say is your least favorite part of it hmm I think my least favorite part of it is all the stuff that doesn't have anything to do with teaching. Um, you know, office kind of business and department meetings and things like that, which are a necessary function of the job, but those are the sort of least fun sometimes. But they're necessary, and they usually end up being helpful and useful. Do you have any tips for doing the least fun stuff, the uh, things you're not looking forward to do while teaching? Well, the lucky thing for me is that I, I really like my colleagues. There's there's nobody that I don't want to see at a meeting or anything like that. So it's 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 not really that bad. It's not that big of a problem. Okay. So what are future plans that you have regarding what you do? Hopefully to continue doing this for another <laughs> 30 years. No, I don't probably think that that will happen. But to continue teaching it for as long as I'm able to. Um, I'm not ready to think about retiring anytime soon. Uh, again, it's like I get to be... A kid uh, and live out my dream of being in music and being around other people who want to be in music. Do you have any final thoughts that you would like to share? No, I think that you've covered, you asked really good questions and I was really glad to talk to you today. Thank you for joining me and I appreciate all of you said and yeah, um, I believe this is it. Thanks, Greg. This has been The Professionals Podcast by Music Business Technology and Broadcast Media Technology students. Join us next time on Outcast OCCR Owens Community College Radio.